So let me now move to a little bit broader context, and that is social support for mothers. And again, you know, people say, why do you focus on mothers in the study and not equally mothers and fathers? Some of that is because the, in the, the, the families that we are studying, the mothers tend to be the primary caregivers. Um, that may be less so in the current generation, younger families, but in that generation it was more so. Um, we also have collected data from fathers and have published papers on fathers, but today I'm focusing in on the mothers because that we have the most sustained data on mothers. Um, but I think that that's a flaw of our research and is something that um, I wish we could have had funding and um, support for a, a, a broader view. We've also collected data from adult siblings and they become increasingly important because as parents become, some of the older mothers in our study have become, they and their husbands have both become frail, some have passed away. The siblings inherit the, 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 it's the next generation of caregiving, they inherit the mantle of caregiving or oversight or companionship or whatever the, their brother or sister needs. But so with that um, apology in mind, I'll be talking about mothers here and the social support for mothers. We are interested not only in what sustains the son or daughter on the spectrum, but also what sustains um, the family as well. So back to the circle of support graphic. Here we're talking about how the social support system surrounding the nuclear family can have a positive influence on the family as well. And I think grandparents will come in here in this story. So in measuring social support, this is how we did it. We asked the mother to name the people who are important in her life, her family, her friends, the people who sustain her. And she makes a list of the people. Um, we do this every time we visit with the family. So we track how social support changes over this more than a decade period of study. And then we ask her to rate positive support, the extent to which each person she listed was a, was a source of reassurance, respect, is this someone you could turn to for care? Is this someone you can confide in? And then we asked um, about negative support. I mean, support is sort of, negative support is a funny concept if it's negative and it's support, but so for want of a better term, we asked whether each of those people was someone who criticized her involvement with her child um, with ASD, who blamed her for her child's problems, who made excessive demands on her. So it's the same people rated both for what their positive support, their reassurance, their um, respect, et cetera, as well as for some of these more negative um, characteristics. And then, so we turn that into three measures of social support. One is the number of family and friends who are listed. That's the size of the social support network. And the second is the positive support. And the third is the negative support um, from these same network members. And we looked at whether social support affected the mother's um, symptoms of depression, if she had any, her positive affect, in other words, her feelings of high energy, friendliness, happiness, and also her negative affect, which are feelings of anxiety or anger or fatigue or confusion. And this study was led um, by Leanne Smith, um, who I've mentioned several times. And she asked whether social support at time two in our study predicted the mother's level of depression and positive and negative affect at time three. And the only reason we focus on time two and time three is those were the only times we measured negative affect. Um, and now we have found that it's an important thing, sorry, that was the only time we measured negative support. And we have found that this is a very important dimension and we're measuring it again now in our last round of data collection. So what you see here in this slide is to show that the size of the support network, the number of people the mother listed as important to her, friends and family, at time two was associated with declining symptoms of depression 18 months later at time three and also increasing positive affect at time three. So when mothers felt, when, when mothers had a large network of friends and family members, they became um, less like, likely to have depressive symptoms and more likely to have positive feelings of energy and friendliness and um, enthusiasm over that period of time. This is the negative affect, negative support story, sorry. And it's a, it was a bit of a surprise to us um, to see how strong the negative affect, negative support story comes out. So mothers who have high levels of negative support at time two end up having increasing depression over the 18 month period, 
decreasing positive affect and increasing negative affect. So negative support, again, being blamed for their child um, on the spectrum, being criticized for the way they interact with their child, where, when the people in their social network make too many demands on them, all of those characteristics um, of negative support drive worsening well-being for mothers um, in our study. So saying this in a positive way, um, when mothers have a large network of friends and family members that they feel is, are their network who travel through life with them, and when these friends and family members are not critical, are not blameful, and don't make excessive demands on the mother, that breeds a psychologically thriving um, individual. And this is an important message for grandparents, for other family members and friends, and that is to be there. You know, that's what being in the network is, the number of people there, to be there and to withhold those feelings of criticism and blame um, because th th that will strengthen the ability of the mother to remain as the primary caregiver. The reason we stopped collecting data about negative support was because it was a relatively rare phenomenon few of the mothers said that they received um, that much criticism or um, blame from the people in their network. And so we thought it wasn't that productive a line of research that we were asking questions that few people endorsed. But when, we, when Leanne Smith began this analysis and saw the power, the importance of negative support and how important it is to track the influence of blame and criticism for the mothers, we felt even if it was infrequent, it's important to bring it back into the battery of measures that we administer at each time. So we'll learn more about it as we analyze our recent data. So to sum up where we are right now, we have shown in our data um, that the family environment is really important. Adaptability is critical. Warmth, lack of criticism, these qualities of the family environment can have a strong positive effect on adolescents and adults with, with autism spectrum diagnoses. And that these are sustained effects. They have been shown to not only exist at a single point in time, but over 18 months, over 36 months, over seven years. And one of the reasons why it's important to have these long longitudinal studies like ours, and why it's so why we are so incredibly grateful to the families who put up with us, visiting them, asking questions, asking them to fill out questionnaires, asking us, to, allowing us to come into their lives time and time again over this long period of time, is because it's only by tracking these changes over time that we have insights into where, how things unfold in a stage of life that has not been well understood before, up until now. So, We've also shown that the, and I'm just showing you a little bit of our data, um, how important the family environment is, not just for the sons and daughters with the diagnosis, but also we showed this for the mothers, um, that the, there's like a ripple effect of the family environment. Um, and there's a ripple effect of social support and of family support. So that what we need to do as we think about these circles of support is find ways for the individual on the spectrum to be supported by the family, to be supported by the broader friends and family network of surrounding the nuclear family, and also by thinking about how services um, can help sustain this progress. And that um, we have a social service system that was largely designed, um, well, that was designed without adults with autism in mind. Um, when, our, when the service system that we have for adults with developmental disabilities was developed, individuals with autism diagnoses or symptoms were not the sort of the um, example that was driving the development of the service system. I think probably it was driven by individuals with Down syndrome and people who have intellectual disabilities without the significant behavioral challenges and symptomatic challenges um, faced by people with autism, the complex medical um, challenges that they face. And so, I think part of what the, our task is as a community of people concerned about autism during adolescence, adulthood, and into midlife is to say how can services be modified and um, uh, retargeted um, so that we have individuals' needs such as those with autism spectrum disorders.